one on this computer, yeah. All right, this class is dedicated actually to um, my wife's mother, my mother-in-law, who's uh, your site was today. Her name is Dvorah Basleib, so this shear is Nick Dash to Dvorah Basleib, Lilu Nishmas Dvorah Basleib. Shkam Javaliyah, Chaim Chaim. Amen, amen. Okay, let us uh, give a review as to what we were talking about. This particular discourse, this mimer, uh, is about the concept of, um, well, it started off, the mimer starts off with the famous mimer chazal, Bashash Dimu, Yisrael Nasa Lenishma. When Bnei Yisrael preceded Nasa, we will do Lenishma too, we will understand. When they preceded that, so the, there were Malachi Asharis, angels that came and they they placed crowns on their heads, they tied crowns on their heads, and so on. So the first uh, thing we have to understand is why were there two crowns tied on the heads, and what are these two crowns all about? He started to explain the difference between the concept of keter, which is a crown, uh, the concept of keter, and all of the other svirot, that all of the other svirot are pnimiyim, they're called Pnimim, and Keter is the aspect of Makif. What's the difference between Pnimim and Makif is the whole subject, essentially, of this particular discourse of this Maima. He first went on to explain that there are three Pirushim in the, the three meanings of the word Keter. One uh, meaning is to hold back, to wait, uh, wait in hope. That's the first meaning. Wait, waiting hopefully is one of the meaning of uh, meanings of Katarim. Second is of Keter. The second is it's the lotion of Atara. Atara is a crown, actually a crown, a crown like that a, that a king would wear. And the third one is that it's something that envelops, it surrounds. It's lotion sivuv, right? Like something surrounds. Uh, it surrounds the head. The crown surrounds the head, and he started to explain the difference, difference between makif or soivev and pnimi. Makif meaning that which surrounds, rather than pnimi, that which is melubash, that which is closed within. I did explain, uh, perhaps not at great length, but I did explain that this uh, actually relates to a very, very fundamental con concept in the development of Kabbalah in general, and in terms of Hasidus in particular. And that is called the concept of Hishtalshalut, um, Hitlabshut, and Hashra'ah. Let me just write that on a whiteboard so that you'll be able to see it more clearly. Can everyone see the whiteboard? Oh, um, I suppose it was, if your mics are turned off, you're not going to be able to tell me. Yes. Um, yeah, okay. So, so there's Hishtalshalut. Um, now, writing with a mouse, as you probably are aware, is not the easiest thing in the world, but I'm going to try. Right, That's Ishtalshalut. I'll explain what these are in a second. Hitlab Shut. Hitlab Shut. Hitlab Shut and Hashra'ah. Would you really say Reb Isaac was an innovator of these, of this putting these three things? I, I, I wouldn't say that he was the innovator of these terms, but I would say that he clarified the three stages of it. Um, what what, uh, what Reb Abner is asking over here is um, the origin of this, um, these three terms is a mimer of Reb Yitzhak, Rabbi Yitzhak, Rabbi Yitzhak, was one of the great maskilim and one of the great uh, intellectual giants of um, amongst the Hasidim of Hasidus, and he writes in a, a maimer called Maimer Hashiflus Vasimcha, the maimer on humility and or lowliness and joy, um, which you might call, I suppose, uh, the bipolar maimer <laughs> in some ways. Yeah, uh, humility and joy. Um, and um, in any event, he writes over there that the development of Kabbalah and, the, and, and certainly the concept of the Baal Shem Tov relates to these three stages. The first stage of Kabbalah was Ishtal Shalut. Ishtal Shalut meaning the, the evolving levels of, of underlying um, evolution or devolution of the Svirot. 
which is called Hishtalshalut, the chaining down of being, as it's called in uh, in some English uh, books. Yeah, the chain from the Loshan Shalshelet, the word Shalshelet, which means a chain, so that the bottom part of the upper link is connected to the upper part of the bottom of the of the link below it and so on and so forth and so it goes down in a chain of being from higher to lower that's called Nishtal Shalut. then there's Hitlav Shut. Hitlav Shut is the intermingling and the interaction of what is called Partsufim this is found in the this is a Chidush in the or well let, let me um let me just back up a second. The whole concept of Ishtal Shalut is, uh, is explained in all the Mekobolim until the Ramak. But uh, Rizal brings in a new dimension, even though this is mentioned also in the Tikkunim, in the Tikkun Zohar, and various other places in the Zohar, the whole concept of Hitlav Shut, Hitlav Shut, where the interaction, interactive aspect, but Rizal makes this the center of his concept in, um, in, in uh, obviously on the concept that he explains in his forum in Kabbalah. And then along comes the Baal Shem Tov, and he speaks about the concept of Hashra'a. We didn't really explain Hashra'a very, uh, very much in depth, but the concept of Hashra'a is essentially the idea of the indwelling or the dwelling, let's put it that way, of godliness, not looking at the interactions, not looking at the, um, the spiritual development, and so on and so forth, but the actual presence of divinity, the presence of God. And that is the concept of Hashra'a. Now, um, so that's those three, three ideas. What we've, been, what we've been explaining up until now is essentially the idea of Hitlav Shut. Uh, how have we been explaining that? So we, we, went to, we, we started explaining the difference between Or Makif and Or Pnimi. Keter is the idea of Hashra'a. The other three wrote are the idea of Hitlav Shut, a Malubash, it's an or Malubash in a Kli, a light which is closed within a vessel, or Malubash in a Kli. And therefore, there is an interaction between these things so that the vessel affects the, or the light and the light affects the vessel. Both of them have uh, this sort of uh, dual relationship, each affects the other. And he began to explain that concept with all of the various other uh, Svirot. And of course, in Chassidus, the way you explain things is you explain them by way of the Kohot nefesh, by way of the powers of the soul. So there's the powers of the soul would be things like Chochma, Bina, Da'at, and so on and so forth. All the powers of the soul that are explained uh, at length. And um, if I should probably I've gotten this prepared beforehand but I didn't think of it just one second I'm going to just pull up a chart rot and powers rot and powers there we go okay um I'll share the screen as soon as this comes up here we go okay now I'm going to share the screen. Share the screen. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here are the three rot and the powers of the soul, right? As you can see, if anyone wants this chart, by the way, just let me know and I'll send you a copy. Um, here we have uh, the three rot of Keter at the top, obviously, and that corresponds to the, the powers of the soul that are called faith, delight, and will. Will is the one that we are going to be talking about in this mimer, at least initially. He does t discuss the concept of delight as well, but um, primarily we're going to start, we'll talk about the concept of the will, and we'll see why later on. Um, the truth is that he does develop it beyond the concept of will to the level of delight and the level of faith and so on, and that's why he actually brings three different um, ex explanations of the word keter, but we'll see that later on. In any event, this corresponds to three parts of in three aspects of Keter, which are called Arich, corresponding to will, the, the outermost aspect of Keter, Atik, which is a more inner, the inner, an inner dimension of Keter, and Radla, which is the highest level of Keter. That would correspond in the human soul to faith. Atik corresponds to the light, and Arich, Arich corresponds to the will. Okay, so that's the transcendent power of the soul, the concept of will. And this is what we're going to explain shortly. But just to review the idea of Chochmah, wisdom, intelligence, bitl, self nullification etc., etc. Chochmah is the power of wisdom and intelligence. Uh, 
Bina is the power of understanding. That's also related to the concept of joy. Em habonim smeicho. Right? Chesed is uh, the idea of loving kindness, emotional connection, gvura, might, or fear, privacy, etc., setting boundaries, and so on. With the, uh, with the, when, you, when you get to the emotional qualities, beginning with chesed and gvura, etc., um, so there's also a negative quality, which is shown by the um, negative of the minus sign in front of them. Lust and self-love. So love and kindness can be expressed in the wrong way. It can be expressed as self-love. It can also be expressed as lust, which is a loving thing, but in the wrong direction. It's going, it's doing the wrong thing. Okay, similarly with uh, Gavura, would be anger, jealousy, hatred, etc., etc. And uh, so on, we go through all of the spherot. Right, all of this we wrote. But um, what happens is that the kli of the sphira, in other words, the expression thereof, the expression of it in a particular emotional quality or even in an intellectual quality, reduces the amount of light within it, so to speak. So, in other words, the light that there'll be in, uh, let's say, in, um, in Tiferet as compared with that, is going to be much, much reduced. The level of light in Chesed is much reduced from the way it is in Chochmah. And in Chochmah, it's already reduced. Since it's an or in a Kli, a light in a vessel, that concept of a light within a Kli is already a constriction on the light. In order for it to be within the Kli and not r- jump out of the Kli, so to speak, or just shatter the vessel, it has to be constricted sufficiently so that the vessel can contain it and express it. And it's expressed in that particular way because it's Chochmah. The um, Ramak, uh, and I think I explained this uh, previously, the Ramak uh, says that the light in all of the vessels, in all of the Svirot, is all the same light. It's only that the Svira is like, uh, sort of gives the light a particular color. This one would be blue, let's call it chesed would be blue, or white, let's say. Gvura would be red, tiferet would be uh, like the color of an esrog, right, that, uh, and so on. And each one has their own color. And that's the way the Ramak says it. But the water in them, the water in the vessel, in other words, the light in the vessel is all the same light, right? It's only the vessel that gives it color. The Arizal disagrees with this. The Arizal says that the light that itself already has its siyut. In order for the light to be the light of chesed, it has to have the tziur of chesed within it. And he's been talking about this uh, sort of briefly. We haven't discussed it at length because, um, well, we haven't discussed it at length, but uh, that is indeed the case, that every sphira has its a light that is particularly suited by the tziur of the light, there's a, there's, there, there, there's a, so to speak, a shape within the light, a limitation within the light that makes it the pr- appropriate light for chesed or the appropriate light for gvura. And the light for gvura is not the same as the light for chesed. The light for chesed is not the same as the light for gvura and for tiferet and for netzach, etc., etc. Right? You can have, in certain cases, you can have a certain um, switching of the vessel and the light. So that, which is called in, 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 uh, in Kabbalah and it's brought in Hasidus in a number of places, it's called Achlipu Duchtaihu. They change their places. So in other words, you can have the light of Chesed in the Kli of Gevura. So for example, this would be a parent, um, let's say scolding might be the wrong word, might be a little bit harsh, but a parent scolding a child who is just about to do something dangerous that's the act of chesed comes out in a way of gvura, but out of love for the child. The parent is telling the child out of love, don't do that, because he knows that it could harm the child or whatever. So the kli is a kli of gvura, but the light, the oil is an oil of chesed, the intention is chesed. And of course, you can have it the other way around. You can have the light of gvura and the kli of chesed, and so on and so forth. In any event, those are the... Um, uh, the possibilities of achlifu duchtaihu, they change their places. So, um, we, uh, we said at the end of the previous chapter, the kitzer of the previous chapter is that um, 
The Iker is that the Kochot are called Kochot Pnimiyim. They are called um, internal. Yeah, oh, here we've got a question here. One second. Yeah. Uh, what's the difference in the Mesholim of light through colored glasses and water in colored glass? Um, the Ramak just uses the, he uses, uh, the Ramak uses the example of water, uh, of water in, uh, in glasses, water in different colored glasses. That's just the, 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 the analogy that he uses. It's, um, um, I suppose you could use it for, uh, you know, it could, could be interchangeable light, but that's the analogy that he uses, um, water in different vessels. Okay. So. The conclusion of the previous chapter was that the kohot are called kohot pnimiim. Why? Because they are, in other words, internalized uh, powers. These powers are the internal powers because they are limited in essence. They move bolin be'etzim. They're limited in essence. Um, actually, we might as well do this in the following way. Might as well do this here. Okay. Yeah, let's just read the the, um, the kitzer. Can everyone see? I assume that you can see the um, the screen here. Yeah. Highlighted in green. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the uh, so in, in brief, this is the uh, summary of the previous chapter. The powers that we spoke about, the powers of the soul, are called pnimim. Right, they're internalized. They become internal powers. They're not kohot makifim that envelop the whole person, but they kohot that work in one specific way and in one specific aspect of the person, but they're not the whole person. Why? Because these kohot are pnimim because they mukbalim beetzim, or because they mukbalim because they're limited. They're essentially limited. Therefore, they can become pnimi. They can become ex uh, expressed internally through the powers of the soul. But the nefesh, it's in, the nefesh itself, the soul itself is, is unlimited. The, the soul itself is not its powers. The powers of the soul are not the soul. For example, um, um, I remember hearing a, an interview uh, with a soldier who lost um, an arm and two legs in, um, in Afghanistan, I think it was. Very tragic story, but he lost an arm and two legs, and um, and they were interviewing him, and he said, "Listen, I want to tell you something." He said, "I know you're looking at me, and you know you feel terrible about my condition, etc." He said, "But I want to tell you something. I was quite surprised to find that I hadn't actually changed. I'm still the same person. It's true, I'm a person now with only one arm and no legs, but I." don't feel any different as a person, it's still me. Why? Because the person is the person, it's not the person, not his arms, and he's not his nose, and he's not his legs, and he's not his anything else. The person is, he's neshama, and his neshama is one neshama, and it's bleak will. It's not limited to an expression in this limb, or in that limb, or in another limb, right? And the neshama is, relatively speaking, infinite compared with the, the, the powers of the soul, which are expressed through particular vessels, the right arm, the left arm, the right arm, chesed, the left arm, uh, gvura, etc. So, built in uh, and includes within itself, kochot mugbalim, limited powers, as we just said. Rak behit kalalusam ba'etzem help him built in mugbalim. But when the powers are in the neshoma itself, when they're not expressed in the limbs, but they're part of the structure, the internal structure of the neshama, then they're bleak wool. Now, this is a very important thing, that bleak wool meaning infinite. Now, this is a very important thing to know because uh, one of the, one of the Chabad Rebbe's, um, the Rebbe Maharash, the fourth Rebbe of Chabad, um, had a, uh, I suppose you could call it a motto. His motto was, L'chathila river, right? Uh, from the outset, we go over the top. Uh, he was talking to somebody who was facing certain problems and he, he was asking for a way to get around them or should he just, you know, duck until the problem passes over, until things change, until things get better, or whatever, just duck and keep a low profile and so on. What should he do? And the, uh, the uh, River Maharaj said to him, my approach is river. You go over the top from the outset, right? You go over the top. In other words, you don't um, skirt the issue. You don't duck until the issues uh, worked itself out. You go over the top. 
uh, meaning to say, you use the powers of the soul the way they are in the soul and not the way they are in the, um, in the uh, various limbs. Now, that's one way of explaining it. There's other ways of explaining it as well. But we will see later on how we explain that concept a little bit better. We'll get to that. Okay, so. In order for the powers to be revealed, uh, this is through what is called Timtuma Nefesh. The Nefesh has to go through a process of Timtum, of constriction, of limiting, of narrowing down. And according to the manner of the various Evorim, of the limbs, that is how the Or HaNefesh, the light of the Neshama, expresses itself. So in other words, um, just let's let's take it on the most physical from from the most physical point of view if a person's right arm is very weak the ability to express the strength of the right arm is going to be limited right because the arm is very weak similarly when it comes to a power of the soul if a, a power of the neshama if one particular koyach is very limited then the person is able to only express it in a very sort of a very weak and mild uh, kind of a manner Right, um, you see the expression right throughout Tanakh of uh, of people who are called Gibore Ruach, right? Gibore Ruach, heroes of the spirit. Now, what does that mean, heroes of the spirit? It doesn't mean that they were necessarily had bigger muscles than everybody else, or were uh, you know uh, top MMA fighters or anything like that. No, it just meant that their spirit was so powerful that it was able to um, overcome an enemy because of the power of that, of that, of the person's enthusiasm, energy, um, how you want to call it, gvura, right? It's, he's, uh, etc. Okay. So we say, lefi oifen haivorim, according to the ability of the limb, is the ability of the light to shine through. If the limb is weak, only a limited light. If the limb is stronger, a stronger light. And we mean that not only in a physical sense, in terms of the body, we mean that as the limbs, so to speak, of the soul, the power of chesed, the power of gvura, and so on and so forth, in the neshama. And similarly, the power of seichel, which is also a limited power in the, in the power of intellect. Okay. All right. So now we're going to come, uh, we, we, we're now starting the fourth and final peric of this uh, chapter of this um, this discourse, and he says as follows. And the fact that the koyachs themselves come into limitation and into division, they come into division because uh, they are limited and therefore they can be divided. Yeah, united we stand, divided, uh, united we rule, divided we fall. I think that's the expression, yeah? Something like that. In any event, divide it, yeah? Like the power of intellect. It does not come in a way of pshitus. Pshitus means that um, um, it doesn't come in a way of absolute, like, like pure, yeah, it doesn't come in a way of purity. Uh, it's not, partial means, uh, means um, um, not simple. Simple is the wrong word but um, undiluted, let's put it that way. The seichel does not come to us undiluted. It's diluted. It's diluted with various emotional experiences, diluted with whether, the, way we, the, the way we've been taught to see things, the way we've been taught to react to things, and so on. So the person's intellect is diluted. It doesn't come in the way of pshitos. And part of the whole process of maturing and, and, and indeed of meditating in order to mature, has to do very largely with um, trying to get to that pshitus of seichel, get to that, 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 that meta state, the way the, the, the seichel is in the neshama itself, but not the way it's expressed in the brain. We're trying to get to the etzma to koach, or what's called the koach iuli, Right, the um, the uh, the meta power rather than just the power as it's expressed in the brain. We're trying to get to that. Okay, so seichel and babuchinus pshitus. When the seichel is expressed in the brain, it's not um, it's not in a in a manner of pshitus of, uh, of of purity and no ag admixture ubuchinus bligvul or unlimited kim bahakbolo bishalkos. No, it comes in a limited way 
and in a um, uh, divis it, it's divisible, it's divided into various aspects, into various parts. The whole or seichel, that every aspect of seichel, every aspect of intellect, you can feel the limitation in the intellect. In other words, um, to use my favorite example of, uh, of these kinds of things, um, the example of two apples plus two apples equals four apples. What are we talking about here? We're talking about apples, right? The more you're talking about specifics, the more limited the things become. If you would just say two plus two equals four, that's a less limited, yes, it's still limited because it's the number two, it's not the number infinite or whatever. It's not an infinite number, it's a limited number, but nevertheless. So two plus two equals four is less limited than two apples plus two apples equals four apples because there it's even more of a limitation. Malumash, the two plus two is malumash in the four apples that you have in front of you, so to speak. Right? That's the concept of Islam shoes. Islam shoes is limitation. It limits the thing and therefore, because of the limitations, there can be interactions. We'll see that later. Okay. Vlok moha rotsoin. But this is not like rotsoin. Shibabi his galus be spashtus bilti mugbelis. The rotsoin comes in a way that it is not, um, it's not limited to a particular thing. It is the person's will. Now, let's give an example of this. What, uh, what are we talking about? You know, probably, I mean, it depends on what kind of person we're talking about, but um, the Gemara says like this, Omar Malka, Akartura, right? Says the king, remove the mountain. He wants to go somewhere and the mountain's in his way. So the king says, remove the mountain. And the servants have to remove the mountain. And uh, that's all there is to it. Is it that important? Could he go around the mountain? Of course he could, but he's a king. He doesn't want to, right? He wants to go straight. He doesn't want to go around. The concept of, uh, of will is therefore pushes things through. All right, let me, let, me, let me explain a little bit differently. The power of the soul works on the objects around us. Powers of the soul work on limited objects. The power of Ratsoin is the person himself. It's not the thing that he does. It's not the thing that, uh, that, that, that uh, you can describe him by. Oh, he's a smart guy, or, he's a, or she's a kind person. The concept of Ratzon is the, is the nefesh itself. Ki a Ratzon hu a nefesh. The Ratzon is the nefesh. Okay, so therefore, its expression is built in Mugbelet. It's unlimited. It comes when the rotten is experienced, experienced as um, as bligvul. It doesn't have any limitations, and therefore, when the when 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 the king is the king's will is transgressed, that's immediately cause for the sub he's the subject who transgressed to be put to death, no matter how minor. The infringement. Why? Because you transgress the king's will. It's not just that you can transgress the command, you transgress his will. Right? So the whole concept of will is, in a sense, indivisible. You see this uh, very much with, uh, with, with little kids. When a kid wants something, they want it no matter what. Even if it's not uh, practical, it's not good for them, it's not the right time, whatever it is. I want it, I want it, I want it, and that's it. There's no... You can't explain it because it's an expression of, I have to have it. It's my will. That's what I want. So that's the concept, essentially, of will. And we're going to see this later on, uh, that this is the idea, uh, as we'll explain later, this is the idea of hashra'ah. That's the etzim in the elokus. It's expressed through, the, through God's will. Right? The uh, etzim of elokus is expressed through God's will, which is the practical mitzvahs. Okay, the mitzvahs of the Torah are the will of Hashem. Okay, we'll get to that later. But intellect comes in a limited way. Um, besides the fact that it's expressed, the seichel is expressed in a particular detail, in a particular thing. And it can also be expressed in that way. I want this, I don't want that, right? So it's also expressed in, in a prat, in a detail. 
Nevertheless, he na etzim or ragilu who or mugbal. Nevertheless, the or of seichel is a limited or. The or of intellect is a limited. The, the conceptual basis of it is a limited thing. It applies in this case. It doesn't apply in that case. Okay. Shigam or seichel shababa hafshota. Even an intellectual idea that comes in um, that comes in a, in a manner of hafshota. Hafshota means it's stripped away from its um, um, from a sort of straightforward definitions of or limiting it to one particular case or one particular case only. We're taking it sort of on the meta level. Hafshota is the meta level. A lot of uh, of Hasidic meditation um, is the concept of Havshota, to be mafshit the inyonim migash biyusam. We see things on a physical level, we see the physical surface of things, and we want to get to beyond the surface. Beyond the surface, that's called the process. That process of getting beyond the surface, getting to the core of the issue, is called Havshota. It's mafshit. We're stripping away. The things that are irrelevant, the things that are not the, the, the primary defining characteristics of the thing that we want to get to. It's called hafshota, stripping it away, until we get to the core. So, even uh, mufshat, the, 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 in other words, even seichel that's on a theoretical level, it's not, not practical seichel necessarily. It's a theoretical construct. It's an idea. Nevertheless, nitfa, sorry, she'enu nitfa is called kach ba'oisius, which is not graspable so much in letters, in words. In other words, you can't really explain it fully. It's difficult to explain. Nevertheless, ha'rehu v'chidus or mu'ba. It's nevertheless a limited or. It's nevertheless, even so, even if it's, Seichel, which is Mufshat, is nevertheless defined and limited. It applies only in this particular, um, uh, uh, these particular concepts are relevant and those are not. Um, for instance, um, the rules of, of derivation of Rabbi Yishmoel, the rules of, uh, of Talmudic argument, Klal Pratu Klal, um, and so on and so forth. There's actually a, a, a safer that discusses these, um, that discusses all of the uh, the klalim in Talmud. So, so there's several for him, but one, one, one that I'm recalling right now is called Kesef Nivchar. Kesef Nivchar. Uh, it discusses the, like, sort of the conceptual basis and brings examples right throughout Shas of one, this, of, of, a, of a particular instance of this, Talmudic principle. In any event, so even if it's a principle, nevertheless, that principle is still a limited, it is limited compared with the idea of Ratzon, because Ratzon itself is the Nefesh. It's not a power of the Nefesh, it is the Nefesh. It's the expression of the Nefesh itself. So that's when, when it's an Or Mugbal, when it's an Or Pnimi, when it's an imminent light, then it is essentially limited. And it's also limited in its application on what it, what this idea can apply to. It can apply to this, it doesn't apply to that. It applies to um, uh, this set of circumstances, it doesn't apply to that set of circumstances. Okay. The Kol Seichel Emiti Yesh Bohag Bola, that any true thinking, any true thought concept, has within it limitations. Kama Yachol is Pashet. How much it can, into what areas it can sink, into what areas it can, um, uh, it pertains. One of the people who was actually, um, you could say, took this idea to the limit was. Um, one of the Rebbe's teachers, the Rogachova. Um, he was a uh, tremendous, uh, tremendous mind. Um, uh, Rabbi Yosef Mirujin, uh, Miroz, uh, Miroz, Yosef Rosen was his name. Um, and he wrote a sefer called Mephaneach. Um, 
Panayach Tzvonot, Tzvonot Panayach, I'm sorry, Tzvonot Panayach, like Yosef, Yosef, Yosef HaTadik, Yosef in uh, Biblical Yosef, was called Tzvonot Panayach, that was the name that Paro gave him, the person who reveals secrets, so, <laughs> it says a story about the Chopet Chaim, I think it was, that um, he, uh, he, he got the Sefer Tzvonot Panayach, which is the Sefer of uh, Rabbi Yosef Ruzin, who was the Rebbe's teacher, and he had such a like deep mind that um, that yeah, it was very difficult for someone who wasn't just a, a huge Talmud Chochem to understand him. So when the Chofetz Chaim uh, got his Sefer, as the story goes, he looked into it, and uh, you know he was he was um, um, paging through, uh, yeah, page here, page there, looking into it a little bit, and then he looks at the title and he says. Softness Panayach, which means the revealer of secrets. Adra by Yosef Razin. <laughs> Yosef Razin means he adds secrets, right? That was his name, Yosef Razin. You know, Yosef Rosen, Razin, Razin. Yosef Razin means he adds secrets to uh, to to the Torah. So, um, okay, so he was one of the people that was able to define the exact tchum. Like well, I, I, this is where the idea stretches out to, and it can't reach any further. This is the outer limit of this particular idea. And beyond that, it doesn't apply. And he was famous for being able to magdir, magdir to limit and make the get there, the hagdora of this particular concept that he wanted to discuss, whatever the concept was. Mishu Chochem Godel, anyone who is a great uh, sage, that understands this concept in its depth. Yoiser, the more he understands the concept in the depth, in depth, Yachol is Pashat Boy Yoiser. You can bring the concept further and further to the furthest reaches of where this particular thing may apply. And you sometimes find that in, in, in my Morim Chassidus, and all of a sudden they'll bring something in which comes from a completely different field, like from our locha, right? A concept in Aloha, which all of a sudden is uh, brought into Hasidus. Uh, just an example that uh, comes to the top of my mind was um, uh, the famous uh, story with the Alter Rebbe. That um, there, there is a Mishnah in Shabbos that says, Call Bala Hasher, Yoitzim Vesher, Venim Shachim Vesher. All animals who wear a chain all the time, they wear this chain around their necks all the time, like an ox or whatever it is, wears a chain around, around its neck, or let's say, uh, you know, an animal that wears a collar, but it wears a chain around its neck, yoitzim v'sher, they can go out on Shabbos with this chain around their neck, because you're not supposed to make your animals work on Shabbos, they also have to rest, but if it wears this chain all of the time, it can go out with a chain, just like we can go out with our clothing, right? Uh, you can even pull the animal along by its chain if you need to put it in, back into the barn or something like that or to go and eat or drink or whatever uh, you can pull it by its chain that's what the Mishnah says in Shabbos so the Alter Rebbe gave a drosha uh, a short drosha at one time uh, that said call Baleha, he said like this call Baleha Shir, all the masters of song because Sher and Shir is spelt essentially the same way, Shin Yud Reish, just that the Nakudas are different. Kol Baal HaShir, Yoitzim Bashir, Venim Shachim Bashir. All the masses of song, their Neshomas go out with song, they go out with song, and they're drawn along with song. In other words, that song can draw the Neshoma out into a state of, uh, essentially to a state of ecstasy. Uh, so some people like this idea, and uh, a certain um, a certain chassid of Alter Rebbe who came from Sh- from Shklov, he repeated this uh, one time in Shklov, and uh, the whole town of Shklov, which was a very misnagdish town, got you know anti-Hasidic town, got to hear of this, and they were mocking and scoffing and uh, and and, and um, caused a huge uproar. <clears throat> for quite a how can you take the Mishnah out of its simple meaning and so on and so forth and explain it in that way? It's kind of okay. So, um, sometime later, uh, things had died down and calmed down a bit. And uh, the Alter Rebbe, as he was doing, was going to visit his Hasidim in various cities. Now, it was a custom that when Talmud Chochem came to town, it was a custom in many, many towns in those days when Talmud Chochem came to town, so he gave a drosha on Shabbos. They asked him Shabbos afternoon to give a drosha. 
So I knew the Alter Rebbe was a tremendous Talmud Chacham. He'd written a Shulchan Aruch and all kinds of other things. And also they perhaps wanted to, uh, you know, test him out and see. They knew he was a Hasidic Rebbe. They wanted to test him out and see if uh, he was, uh, you know, if he, if he actually knew what he was talking about. So they invited him to talk in the shul in Shklov. So he said, okay, yeah, he'll come, but uh, all questions must be presented in writing before, uh, so he could look over them, uh, you know, on Friday or whatever, before, uh, before Shabbos. So the questions were presented, whatever it is, he gets into shul. Uh, the shul is packed to the gills. And he starts off, uh, says the Mishnah in Shabbos, call Baal HaSher, Yosem V'Sher, and Nimshachim V'Sher. And he gives the same, the same word. And he says, and therefore, there were many, many questions that, uh, that, that you asked. I'm not going to answer all of your questions, but I'm going to sing you a song, right? I'm going to sing you an enigma. And of course, they were like livid, they were fuming, and, uh, you know, but Talmud Chochem, you can't uh, embarrass him, whatever. So the altar Rebbe started singing, and everyone got sort of so caught up in the song, that their neshomas went out of the goof, right? The neshoma went out of the neshoma was taken to a higher place. And many of them testified afterwards, many of them who became his chassidim subsequently, became his followers, subsequently testified, they testified that um, their, their answers, the questions became resolved by themselves. They didn't have to hear an answer. When the song took them up to a higher level, they automatically found the resolution to the question that they had. Okay. That's the concept of his, of, of, um, of, of, of um, being able to bring things to bring an idea, bring an understanding to someone who is perhaps on a completely different level from, uh, from you yourself. As we, say, as we just said over here, uh, when he understands these things to their depths, he can bring it even to somebody outside of himself and perhaps not even by explaining it, but just by singing a Any seichel is nevertheless a limitation. It's not the etzim of the thing itself. It's a the cycle of the Indian, it's the theory behind it, it's the explanation of it, but it's not the thing itself, it's not the essence. Behind the Yezah or Pnimi Be'etzem, or Kainu Bagbola. Since it is or Pnimi, it comes Bagbola. Since it is manifested in a Kli, it's an or in a Kli, light in a vessel, therefore it is limited. But Gambaba Pinis is Chalkus, and it also comes into a state of his Chalkus of division. Meaning to say that there's parts to it. Um, as you know, whenever you hear a drosha, so you hear um, things are laid out in a certain manner, and this applies to this, and that applies to that, etc., etc., to the questions that we started asking. They're all connected, but this answers this question, that answers that question, etc., etc., etc. That's called ischalkus, right? There's a number of different uh, details there uh, in, in, in the idea. It's impossible to have an intellectual idea, a concept that doesn't have details. It must have details. The whole Pratcha boy, and in every detail that we're talking about, and boy, every concept has its own limitations, its own gadorium, its own method of explanation, its own uh, conceptual basis and conceptual details that are going to be different from every other concept. And that's how you differentiate between them by explaining that these two concepts are not the same. They might appear to be the same, but here's where they're different. And you find my nafkamina, what's the practical difference between them? This is, applies here and that applies there. And you start to draw out the differences between these things because uh, they each, each is an or mukbal. It's a limited um, light by its nature of being an or pnimi. Okay. That's the depth of the concept, right? It's the, the inner, a, a more, let's call it a more meta idea and a deeper idea. In a different detail of, of, the, of a concept. It doesn't have such a meta idea behind it. It's a fairly simple, straightforward uh, concept. 
V'chaim ba'midois. And similarly to, not only with seichel, the same is true also of emotional qualities. Shal pi ha'seichel, yesh ba'asha shal pi seichel, midas that are that follow intellect. In other words, when the mind rules over the heart, then the, the, uh, the emotions are divisible. And the emotions are, have a certain um, limitation to them. They're controlled by the intellect. When emotions are not controlled by the intellect, then they're actually um, part of Ratzoin. They can be an expression of Ratzoin rather than an expression of Seichel. The, the purpose is that they should be subject to intellect, subject to logic, and subject to thinking, and subject to judgment, and so on and so forth. How the middle, how this particular emotion applies in various situations, etc., etc. Like when we're talking about Ava, which is, which is limited by intellect, in other words, it's aroused by intellect and the application is by a way of intellect and so on and so forth. It comes into limitations. And it doesn't require a mysterious nefesh. It doesn't require you to give up your life for it. Right? I love a certain thing or whatever. I'm not required to give up my life for it. My cycle is going to tell me that even though I love going to shul during the, during the plague or whatever it is, it's not a good thing to do, right? No, why? Because you might become ill and so on, et cetera, just to use a stupid example, in, in any event. Because the, the love is not a love that comes from Ratzoin, it's a love that comes via Seichel, and therefore it's limited. And that's why in the Kavonas of the Mitzvahs there is division. Not in the mitzvah. The mitzvah itself is the ratzon of Hashem. In the mitzvah, there's no division. You'll see in the mitzvah, when uh, a Talmud Chochem puts on a pair of tzitzis and an Amaret puts on a pair of tzitzis, they're both fulfilling the mitzvah of tzitzis equally. 100% equally, no, there's no division in the, in the mitzvah. This is a Talmud Chochem, that's a tzaddik, this is an Amaret and a bur and so on. They're both putting on tzitzis, they're both fulfilling the mitzvah in exactly the same way. But when it comes to the kavonas or mitzvah, then there, then there are different levels. And the kavonas are different levels. This person doesn't have any kavona, and that person has some kavona, and another person can have tremendous kavonas. They're all kavonas that are uh, expressed. The kavonas in the mitzvah is not equal in all of the mitzvahs. Why? Because the reasoning behind it and the secret behind the mitzvah of each for each uh, each mitzvah it's not equal in all of the mitzvahs obviously the kavana of tefillin is going to be different from the kavana of uh, of tzitzis and the kavana of hafroshes um, chala uh, and hadlokas neiros is going to be different from the kavana of kiddush right these are all different kinds of things but you have a question about that. One second. Chazal, didn't Chazal say, don't sit and weigh up the differences between the mitzvahs of Torah? The colors of the colors of Hamurush and Bukhamurus, the most light of the mitzvahs and the most serious of the mitzvahs. Kulam Shavin, they're all equal. Don't go and weigh them up. So explain that's because of the Ratan in the mitzvah. In other words, it's not the kavona. The kavona is the intention, the, the mind part of the mitzvah, the thought part of the mitzvah. But the mitzvah itself, which is Ratan Hashem, is equal for everybody. Tzitz is for a tzaddik and tzitz is for a rosha is exactly the same mitzvah. All of the mitzvahs are equal. But when it comes to the reason for the mitzvah, the kavona of the mitzvah, there we have different levels. And in general, this is the difference between Torah and mitzvahs, that in Torah you have different madragas, in the mitzvahs you have just the mitzvah, just Ratz and Hashem. Okay, I think it's a good place to stop. Uh, we'll stop here, and if there's any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Uh, preferably in the chat box, if you don't mind, and we'll take it from there. Okay.
Any questions? Everything's clear. <laughs> okay, I don't see anyone writing in the chat box, so um, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm writing, I'm, but I can't I'm write question. Chat. I'm question. Yeah, yeah, Ruth, go ahead. Um, do you want to type it in the chat box? You know what? Ask it. There's, there's only a couple of a few people here. It's okay. You can ask it on the. Uh, you can unmute. Uh, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Do you have this recorded? Is it recording? Yes. Yes. yes it's recording. Yeah. Yeah. I will send you uh, the link. Uh, actually, I'll give it to you right now. Um, let me just see here. Um, Yeah, one minute. Let me let me get my. Um... YouTube. Okay. Hey, just one second. I will give you the link to where it's going to be posted uh, shortly. Uh... One account, one second, switch account. Uh, here we go. Okay, here we go. Um, that's where that is. You could just look for Hasidus decoded. C H A S S S S I D U S decoded okay. on YouTube, but that's the link. Okay. And I'm not get you there because uh, a number of people were really sort of uh, trying to steal this um, this name. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good. So, so go to the link; it'll be it'll for sure get you there. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, Kavona is light, action is a vessel. Um, I think what he's saying is Kavona is also, yeah, I mean, to a certain extent, yes, but Kavona is a limited light. It's true that the action is a vessel, but Kavona is also, in a sense, a vessel. It's not, in other words, what we're saying here, the difference that the Chiluk that he's making over here is a Chiluk, the Chiluk being written between Koycha Ratzon and Koycha Seichel, right? Kavona is Koycha Seichel. The, the mitzvah itself, the etzim of the mitzvah is not seichel, it's rotzen Hashem, right? The will of Hashem. So, but, but nevertheless, in a general sense, kavone is the oyer and the, the maise is, uh, is the vessel, yes. Oh, you put that privately, so it's hard to see that. Okay. Well, anyway, that was the question then. Is, okay. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, sure. Uh, okay. Let me just show you what the channel looks like so you'll be able to see it. Just let me go share screen again. Ruth, this is for you in particular. Um, here we are. So this is chapter three. We just started chapter four, so it'll be 4A. I'll put that up uh, as, soon as, it's, as soon as it's ready. Okay. That's the Rebbe Rashab. Um, all right. Shkaya. All right, I see there's no other questions, so we'll leave it at that. All righty, everybody. Have a good one. See you next week. Thank you so much. If we have questions we can ask you in the week, we can send it to you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, anytime. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay, cool. Shkaya. And that, the, all that, um, what you just showed us is on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Channel on YouTube, Hasid is decoded. Okay, Todarba. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Koltov, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm.